Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. So in today's comparison, we're looking at the 2022 Chevrolet Trailblazer Active, which is an all new trim level against the 2022 Jeep Renegade Trailhawk. Both of these are smaller sized SUVs that do have some off-road capabilities to them. They're not hardcore off-roaders, but if you're adventurous and you wanna take these off the pavement, both of these have some really cool features and they offer a pretty good size for the smaller size that they are. So for the Trailblazer in today's video, it had an MSRP right around $32,000. And with the Jeep Renegade, it was closer to $30,000. So I picked two trim levels that are fairly close in price. You can get some options and take away some options so they can be similarly priced. But today we're going to take a look at both of these smaller size SUVs, put them head to head, and then we'll see which one is better and why. We're going to start off today's comparison with what powers this all new Trailblazer. Underneath the hood is the 1.3 liter turbocharged three cylinder engine paired to the nine speed automatic transmission. It pumps out 155 horsepower and 174 pound feet of torque. This does have a part time four wheel drive system. It weighs in right around 3000 pounds. It'll do zero to 60 in 9.4 seconds up to its top speed of 119 miles an hour and it has a fuel capacity of 13.2 gallons. You'll expect to see around 26 miles per gallon in the city and 30 out on the highway. This also has ground clearance of eight inches. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to find an approach angle, a departure angle, or the breakover angle for this off-road focused SUV. But as we move over to the Jeep Renegade now, this has a 1.3 liter four cylinder turbocharged engine paired to the nine speed automatic. It pumps out 177 horsepower and 210 pound-feet of torque. Has the same full-time four-wheel drive system as the Trailblazer. Weighs in around 3,500 pounds. It'll do zero to 60 in nine seconds with a top speed of 123. And it has a fuel capacity of 12.7 gallons. You'll expect to see around 22 miles per gallon in the city and 27 out on the highway. This has ground clearance of 8.7 inches. And for this Renegade, I was able to find 29.9 degrees for the approach angle, 23.2 for the breakover angle, and 32.2 for the departure angle. Now, as we move on to the exterior styling for both of these smaller size SUVs, the all new Trailblazer has a really cool design, especially with the two-tone look finished off in this vivid orange with all of the white. There's even black chrome for the entire front end section giving it more of a classy look. It's a little bit less rugged with that trim piece, kind of more luxurious in a sense, but I think it gives it a great contrast. Now on this Trailblazer, the headlights are actually in the middle section of the bumper with the turn signals and the LED DRLs in the upper section. So very unique, not a lot of vehicles offer that. And this does have LED fog lights in the lower section. There's plenty of cutouts to provide cooling to that turbocharged engine. And it gives it a really nice sleek look, especially with the lines coming down the hood and then the crisp line right in the middle meeting the Chevy Bowtie logo front and center. And then over on this Jeep Renegade, we have a classic design with the seven vertical slats running right through the middle of the grille. This does not have LED headlights. However, there are fog lights and turn signals in the lower section of the bumper. And then being the Trailhawk edition, it gets a lot of red trim, especially on those tow hooks that you can see. Plenty of cutouts too within the grille and the middle section and even in the lower section to provide cooling to that engine. This has a little bit more of a rugged design with the matte black stripe running right down the middle. And I like the boxiness that this model has to offer. Not a whole lot of vehicles in this segment have this boxy design, but it works really well for this Jeep Renegade. And then as we move on to the side profile now for the Trailblazer, this has a set of 17 inch wheels. Now for the active model, it gives it a little bit more beefy of a tire. Not too crazy though for the size. It's going to be a very quiet tire while you're out on the road but this also has all the plastic trim that surrounds the fender flares, as well as the lower section of the side skirts. It's even in the lower corners of that front bumper too, to give it more of that off-road focus style. If everything was body colored, you could see more scratches if you were to take this off-road and get some trail damage. The plastic is a good trim just to give you a little bit more protection. It's easier to replace as well. And then over on the Jeep Renegade, this has a little bit larger of a wheel. It measures 18 inches. Surprising for this off-road focused Trailhawk that we have 18 inch wheels and nothing smaller. Similar to the Trailblazer though, we have all the plastic trim running around the fender arches, as well as the lower section of the door, even the front and rear bumpers. Now this does have gloss black mirrors with the integrated turn signal as well. Different from the Trailblazer obviously, roof racks are also on this model too. And we have more of that boxy design like I mentioned earlier. You can get a really good angle from this perspective. 
And then moving on to the rear end now for this Trailblazer, this has a two-tone design for the spoiler, which gives it a unique look. This has LED taillights as well as a backup camera with all the parking sensors. More of that black chrome in the lower section. This even has a towing capacity right around 1,000 pounds. So that's pretty adequate, especially for this three-cylinder engine. If you have a smaller trailer, you can definitely hook it up to this. And then on the rear end of this Renegade now, we have a body colored spoiler, very similar to the Trailblazer. This has LED taillights, backup camera, that red tow hook in the lower left, and this has a towing capacity right around 2,200 pounds. So it makes sense for it to be a little bit more with that four cylinder engine. So both of these are pretty capable, smaller size vehicles if you need to tow and hook up whatever items you may have. And then as we move on to the cargo space for this Trailblazer, it has a good amount of room. I was able to fit a lot of items in this while I had it for the week. Up underneath the floor is the spare tire with even some more hidden storage so you can place smaller items down below if you need to. So it's a pretty adequate amount of room and the back seats do fold down giving you a lot more interior storage. If you really need to pack this full of items, you have a lot of usable space. And then over on the Jeep Renegade, a similar amount of space. There are some storage bins on both sides just like you saw in the Trailblazer. Plenty of room with the back seats up as well and you can fold these down, giving you that ample amount of storage to pack in items if you need to. And just like the Trailblazer, there's storage up underneath the floor as well as a spare tire, so it gives you plenty of space. And then making your way to the back seats now for this Trailblazer, I'm five foot 10. I had a good amount of space in the back seats. I did have passengers in this while I had it for a week. They didn't have any complaints with the amount of room. We were easily able to adjust for them. Plenty of headroom as well. And then right in the middle is a three prong outlet as well as a USB and a USB-C. Over on the Renegade now, this does have cloth seats with a nice two-tone design. The Trailblazer did have leather seats, so big difference there. But the back seats for the Renegade was actually surprisingly roomy. Plenty of leg room for me at five foot 10. I was very, very impressed with the amount of headroom that I had. Definitely much larger than the back of the Trailblazer. And then right in the middle, three prong outlet as well as a USB. The front seats in the Trailblazer had a really nice design with that two tone leather as well as having some inserts running down them. They were power operated seats as well. And then over on the Renegade, more of that red carried its way to the interior with Trailhawk, the stitching, even all the red accents that you can get a sneak peek at. We had the power adjusting seats as well, so it's really nice to see that addition. And then going back to the Chevy now, for the gauge cluster, it had a really nice design with the analog gauges on both sides. And right in the middle was a lot of information to go through. From your music, you could go through all the vitals so that we could check all that information. You could pull up the navigation when you had that on and running. This model even had adaptive cruise, which is great to see. You could go through your phone when that was paired, even go through all of the basic settings. Over on the Renegade now, there was even more information. I'm very impressed with the amount of information that Dodge offers for their interiors. There's nine different tabs that you can go into. You can go to your speedometer, you can look at all of your vehicle information, go through any diagnostics, pull up your music, phone, driver assistance, all of that information is nicely laid out right in the middle. And then the Renegade also had the addition of all the driving modes that you could easily configure depending on how you wanna drive this. Now the infotainment system on this Trailblazer was very simple and straightforward. It's easy to go through all this information, all the icons as well. It did have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so there was no physical navigation. You did have to plug your phone in in order to pull that up on the screen. But everything else was really easy to go through. Even some shortcuts in the lower section to get to your phone, music, compass, even the climate controls. Now over on the Renegade, there was a lot more information and it's even configurable as well. So all the information in the lower section of the screen, you can drag and drop the icons that you use the most and personalize that lower section depending on what you use the most. I think that is a really cool aspect for everything that you wanna quickly get to. You don't have to hunt and search for it. Now underneath the infotainment system in the Chevy, there was a 12 volt, all the auxiliaries where you could hook up electronics, even a wireless charging pad, which I did use. It charged my phone very quickly. I was impressed to see that. And while this was an all wheel drive vehicle, you could put it into two wheel drive, so it would be front wheel drive biased. I did forget to mention that in the beginning of this video. Underneath the lower section now for the Jeep, we have a lot more controls compared to the Trailblazer, all the climate controls, the power and audio for the radio. You could even shut the screen off, adjust your lane keeping assist. We had all the different modes to take this off-road, which was a huge difference over the active model for the Trailblazer. 
This had a differential lock. You could put it into a downhill assist control, use a four wheel low. So a lot more off-road focused. So I really like this model. It's been really nice. I've done a lot more highway driving with it, averaging a right around 31 MPG. Now that's been more highway in the city. That'll drop a little bit to the high 20s. So it's pretty adequate for the size of this model or for the size of the fuel tank and for the size of this engine. And even though this is a 1.3 liter, it actually has some pep to it. I've been able to pass out on the highway and uh, without having to put my uh, foot to the floor, even right now, I can get up and move without uh, slamming my pedal to the floor. So it has a good amount of power to it uh, for that smaller size engine. And of course that's going to get a little bit better MPG, but it's been really nice to drive. You can hear a little bit of wind noise here and there, but it's nothing too crazy. Uh, it, the suspension absorbs all the bumps very well. It's just a nice daily driving, smaller size SUV. If you're looking for something of this size, you want an SUV, you want something that can tow a little bit if you want a small trailer, and then you want that good MPG as well. It's a great blend. And I like the fact too that with this all new trim level, the Active, it does give you some off-road characteristics. Now this is not a hardcore off-roader. It's not really designed for off-road. We do have the off-road suspension, a little bit beefier of a tire. I do wish, however, maybe it came with a little bit of lift. I know some other manufacturers offer like a one inch lift or something like that, just to give you a little bit more ground clearance. So it's not too off-road focused. It's kind of just, kind of just a, a mild off-road uh, kit. So you can take it on gravel, you know, if you're going camping, hiking, you're going to the mountains. We're getting onto the on-ramp. That is about 80, 85% throttle. I didn't go all the way down, but we're up to cruising speed already. This is a pretty long on-ramp, but we are ready to merge. And as far as visibility goes, it might be a little bit hard to see from this angle, but looking over my left shoulder, really easy to see. As you saw earlier, that pillar in the back is pretty bulky, but honestly, driving this around, being on the highway a lot, where you need to obviously look left and right, depending on which lane you're in, it really hasn't been all that bad. This is one of my favorite smaller size SUVs, simply because it's one of the few, if not the only, that is purpose-built for off-road. Now, obviously, this is not a hardcore off-road, it's probably not going to see off the pavement too often, but we have a lot of different driving modes to take this off-road. And I have seen some videos of this actually doing trails and not just taking it on some gravel roads or uh, straight, uh, straight situations like that. You can actually take this off-road, get some articulation with it. And it's cool to see that for a vehicle like this, you can do that. And I think that for the size of this as well, it's packaged very nicely. Plenty of room for all of your passengers, a lot of room behind the seats for that cargo area. And the fact that you can hook up a small trailer, you could haul maybe some dirt bikes, something, a four wheeler. If you're going off road or getting into those gravel situations, you were pulling something. It's the best of both worlds. As far as visibility over that left shoulder, I can easily see out. I can see over the right side, a little bit of a pillar in the back there, but you do have a second window for your backseat passengers as well. But I can see around that, I can use my side mirrors. As far as maneuverability goes, with a quick three-point turn, pretty tight. So if you do happen to take this off the pavement, it's going to be very nimble, especially through tight trails. And we'll give it one acceleration just in normal mode here. That is pretty peppy. Mild acceleration, we're up to speed. So for the smaller size engine and the lightweight of this vehicle, it's pretty peppy. It'll get up and move. You don't have to worry about it being underpowered. So it's great to see that for a smaller, more economical size engine, still has a good amount of power to get it up and moving. All right, so coming back to my final thoughts now between the 2022 Chevrolet Trailblazer Active and the Jeep Renegade Trailhawk, I was actually able to have the Trailblazer for one week. I put 400 miles on it. I wasn't able to take it off the pavement at all, but it was a really nice smaller size vehicle. I have been in the Renegades as well, just not as much as the Chevy. Personally, I would go with the Jeep Renegade. I think it has a lot more off-road focused uh, components to it, especially with the four-wheel drive system and all the different driving modes. The Trailblazer really wasn't all off-road focused like I thought it was going to be, 
being this active model, active meaning, you know, being adventurous, getting out there, taking your vehicle somewhere, whether you're going camping, hunting, something like that, where you're, you're having to take it on gravel roads, you know, get off the pavement, nothing too crazy, just minor situations like that. I didn't really see the benefit from the Trailblazer. It had a little bit more tuned of a suspension. It had the tires, smaller wheels, which is a plus. So that way you don't get rock rash or anything like that. That was pretty much it. Over on the Renegade, you saw that dial to go through the different driving modes, the downhill assist control, which works really well. It's basically like cruise control for off-road. This had a locking differential, a lot more off-road focused, even more ground clearance. And I couldn't, like I mentioned earlier, I couldn't find any approach, departure or breakover angles for this Chevy that's designed to be able to go off-road. The Jeep Renegade had all of those stats, all that information. So that way you could actually know what it's capable of. And I feel like the Jeep Renegade has a lot more modding potential than the Chevy. I've seen lifted Renegades, you can do bumpers, wheels, uh, all that, all of those off-roading mods. I don't think anyone buying the Trailblazer is actually going to do any of those mods or really take it off-road compared to the Jeep Renegade. So personally, I would pick the Jeep Renegade because I feel like it's that off-road-ish focused. It's not like the Wrangler, obviously, but it's one step below where you could do some parts and take it off-road mildly if that's all you're looking to do. The Trailblazer, I feel like it's going to see payment 100% of the time. But comment down below, let me know your thoughts between the Chevrolet Trailblazer Active and the Jeep Renegade Trailhawk. Let me know which one you would take and why. I think the Jeep Renegade wins in today's comparison, being more off-road focused, like it should be for the smaller size SUV that it is, compared to the Chevrolet Trailblazer. But I hope you enjoyed today's comparison. If you did, give it a huge thumbs up. Check out both of the full detailed reviews if you'd like to see all of the further specs. Both of those are down in the description. And consider subscribing to our channel so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. I will see you all in the next video.